Good evening. Welcome if you've just joined us, and thank you for staying, those of you who were on the earlier tour. Um, I'm Olga Biso. I'm the Seelig Family Chief Curator and Director of Curatorial Affairs here at the Phoenix Art Museum, and just we're thrilled that you could spend um, Wednesday evening with us um, and be part of this film screening of Sandra Ramos's films and a conversation um, with her uh, between myself and my colleague. Uh, Julio Cesar Morales, who is the executive director at the Tucson and was previously the senior curator at the ASU Art Museum. So we're so thrilled to have Sandra here. It's a return from her. The last time she was here was in 2016 for a show at the ASU Art Museum. Before that, uh, in the late 1990s. So I know you have a great fondness um, for Arizona and showcasing the work of, of Cuban artists. Um, she is a multimedia visual artist. Um, and who is Cuban American based in Miami since 2013. But she was born and educated in post revolutionary Cuba um, and really established her career there in the 1990s, began to travel back and forth in the 2000s before um, settling um, in the US. And she really has, uh, from both Cuba and the US, achieved international recognition uh, since the 1990s by expressing her critical relationship to the political and social issues and realities um, on the island creating works about the experience of immigration and exile um, and um, her experiences um, in living in, across those different um, territories and now her experience here in the, in the U.S. Sandra uses a wide range of materials, as you'll see as we um, talk about her work, um, and different techniques such as video, photography, paintings, <coughs> installations, installations that incorporate animations, um, film, Collage printmaking, and she really, uh, she really began uh, as a printmaker, and has really distinguished herself. And loves to work with paper, and has also, um, in terms of making work, has also curated um, amazing portfolios of, of Cuban artists and really supported artists who work um, in, in paper. Um, and you'll see that too expressed in these films that you're about to see here tonight, which are also presented in the Cat's Wing um, in our first four galleries here, which um, will be on view um, really over the, 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 next, the next year. And as you'll see, too, in her works, there's just a tremendous amount of humor and wit and sharp, incisive critique, um, irony, um, and really pathos um, as she examines the contradictions of life in Cuba and also these incommensurate realities that uh, seem to coexist. So we thought it was really a great opportunity to bring Sandra here um, to be with us um, at this time because she is actually in two different exhibitions um, on view um, right now. Look at this, this look at see the what is this what has been uh, selections from the ASU Art Museum's Cuban collection, um, important work from the 1990s, the wonderful painted suitcase piece as part of a, a group exhibition that looks at the works of about 20 artists um, from the generation of the 1990s. And then she's also in another installation that we did in Cat's Wing um, called Migration Stories, Arizona Collects Cuban Art, which uh, highlights um, eight of her short animated films that were screening um, this evening here, together with works by other Cuban artists uh, in the Phoenix Art Museum's collection and local collections um, that really came out of this moment um, in the valley of the Ace Art Museum and collectors here, really supporting and uh, bringing Cuban artists here and supporting their um, practices. These two shows are um, curated to complement the main exhibition of the Juan Francisco Elso exhibition that looks at the work of the late Cuban artist. Uh, looks at, uh, has really not been surveyed, his work has not been surveyed in over 30 years. Um, it, it's a solo exhibition that takes this a contextual look at his work by placing his work in dialogue with other artists. And he died in 1988 um, of leukemia, 32 years old. Um, very young moment, um, small body of work, and the shows, the complimentary shows that we've done are really about trying to give context for Elsa's practice, his legacy, and its impact um, on artists of subsequent generations, which you can read in the works from the ASU Art Museum um, collection, and also just to give our audiences here um, more context about the contemporary art of Cuba and the different waves of migration that have happened since the 60s and how artists um, have reflected um, on those conditions and particularly around a period known as the special period, um, which is uh, 
after the fall of the Berlin Wall and the collapse of communism and uh, the Soviet Union retreats from Cuba, um, sending the country into sort of severe economic um, distress. Um, embargoes of U.S. embargoes against Cuba also deepen that. And so the works of the 1990s in this exhibition and the ACR is really focus on this period, as do these, the films that Sandra will screen today, which are really coming after that period and leading up to her um, departure from Cuba. So themes of migration um, are very much uh, in the um, thematics of this and the films that you'll see. And as I said, uh, she has a very rich history here in, in Arizona as, as part of this um, exhibition in the 90s. Uh, that um, was at the ASC Art Museum and traveled all over the U.S. She also um, was in residence here and produced a print with um, John Armstrong and John Pryor, who are here today, who are a number of Cuban artists to the print. So great welcome, great to have you here. Um, and then she also exhibited again in, in 2016 in a show curated by Hannah Weinberry. As I say, beyond her presence in Arizona, she has a very um, rich uh, biography of shiny biennials all over the world in Venice. Um, they have collections of MoMA, uh, Boston, San Diego Museum, Paris Art Museum, Bronx Museum, Ludwig Museum um, in Germany and Tokyo. So very um, rich and established career over the last 30 years. So tonight you're going to see the eight films. These were made between 2008 and 2013. They're short, they're three to four minutes each, so we'll um, watch the, the full sequence of them. Uh, and then the three of us will come up and be in dialogue about that and also talk about um, Sandra's work um, since then. So I want to thank Fulia for his partnership in um, putting this together and bringing our institutions together um, and also thank um, some of the lenders and donors of works that are on view and thank the, the Castor Collection for lending um, the films um, that we're presenting tonight and are presenting in the museum for the next year. So thank you for being here and we'll now dim the lights uh, and uh, watch the points.
Well, thank you, Legend, for the technical support there, and Paul and Don and everyone on the team here. And thanks again to the casters for lending the films, and Jeremy for suggesting you know this in, in the first place, our director, Jeremy Nikolaisak. Um, just a wonderful opportunity to see them here, presented one after the other on screen, and then you can experience them presented on monitors and, um, and projector in a context of, of other artists in, in Phoenix Art Museum's collection and local collections. But Sandra, you know, you made these films between 2008 and 2013, and you were still living in Havana when you made the first several. And then you started traveling back and forth and then left in 2013. So I wonder if you take us back to that moment and that time period um, and just what it felt like to be in that space and also your own, your own transitions at that time. Yeah. Yes, uh, um, well, uh, my work develops, you know, since the end of the 80s in Cuba all the time and all the time was in relation to what my generation was doing uh, regarding to Cuba, Cuban society and how the role that we have inside this process. Uh, particularly for me, always uh, all my work had to, to, to do with this, I think these two images in some way express the contradiction inside the revolution that was uh, the, the thing that more more important to me that was between the triumphalism uh, of this image of the pioneers uh, and the idea of uh, the possible utopical society that uh, the revolution sell to us and in a way of adoption also and this image here that shows like the suffering of Cuban people for the scarcity for the, the, the poor condition of life inside the island that made that so many people take the, the risk to go through the sea and risk their life to, to leave the country. And in the middle of that, of that, I think we artists were some in some way privileged and were also uh, the people who have the, the opportunity to tell the real story, to tell the story that have all all the, the all the corners of the story, you know, like all the point of view. And how did it start the first film? Hmm? Where, where did it start in terms of the? It, it is in in my case starting by the end of the night uh, of the. 80s when when I uh, start to make my prints uh, that that we are uh, related to tourism at that time and the segregation that we are between tourism and Cuban people in the 80s uh, 90s the hotels were only for tourists um, and and so I create all these characters that you see in also in the in the animations that represent like the different uh, like the, the Cuban prostitute that uh, in, uh, in, in the 90s flourished uh, a lot because of the tourism, <coughs> because of the introduction of dollar in Cuba, and because of the fall of, of Russia and the support that came from the socialist uh, countries at that time made that the, the poverty in Cuba was uh, um, very difficult to, to, to deal with, and so many, many things happen, like prostitution, like uh, the bureaucracy that the men queue. And, and, and here you have like all the reference where these characters came from. They came from Cuban history, but they came also from the, from the, the influence of, of political uh, cartoons and the Russian propaganda and the Cuban propaganda, the tobacco, uh, stamps that were used during the Spanish colonial period. And uh, some characters like the Fool and Liborio uh, were created in 20th, early 20th century to represent uh, different behaviors of Cuban people. Like the Fool was created by Eduardo Avela, and he's the man with the heart that you see, was kind of symbolizing the intellectual that made the Fool 
who criticize the government, but uh, uh, without directly uh, say the sin. So it, it, it was created during, during Machado dictatorship in the circus. And Ligorio, that is the character uh, with the bear uh, uh, here, uh, it's, uh, was created by Torrente at the beginning of 20th century and symbolized Cuban people in general. It was like the farmer. And we have this say that say, don't worry, Ligorio, uh, don't worry, Ligorio pay. It's like the people. And for me, it was a character that I used a lot uh, in relation to Fidel Castro, who, because he always tried to incarnate, incarnate Cuban people and also was a, a way to disguise, disguise this, this character and use, uh, use it in reference to, to Castro. Um, uh, I mean, well, I think there are other characters like Uncle Sam, uh, Lenin, Lenin yeah. uh -huh. Christopher Columbus, I and mean, I think the relay race mm -hmm. one is particularly yeah. powerful, right? Where you just see the characters as Cuba sort of handed yeah. you know, from one to the next and where we'll who will have various interest in Cuba coming forward. These prints, for instance, are very old. They are from the 80s, and here you can see all the characters. Like the, the Hinetera is a Slova, a slang in Cuba that means a like prostitute. And so it's like, but at the same time, it's like the writer, no? The, mm -hmm. um, these are also re re reference to Teresa, all this that we were discussing before. And um, this is the first, the first print in which I use the character of the girl that is in some ways a sim symbol, symbolize all the Cuban born after the revolution. It's, it's an alter ego, um, in some way represent myself, but not only me. It's not autobiographic. It's like to preference from all my gen all my generation. Um, in this case, relate relate to immigration also, so the yeah, loneliness and uniformation in Cuban society because we all receive the same education. We all have like the same cultural experience and the same political experience and it's something like like the the shape of the island itself uh, that mark and isolate us, define how we are. I think the education and all the reference, the cultural reference that we get and the adoctrination in some way also uh, my, my, my generation. When you mm -hmm. talked about the figure as a uh, kind of reference to Alice in Wonderland, mm -hmm. you've, you've quoted from um, Lewis Carroll, but yeah. you've also talked about the uniform as also mm -hmm. a symbol of that indoctrination. Do you want to yeah. talk a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, yes, the, the girl is like, for me, it's like the uh, inconformist. It's, that's why I, I take the reference to Alice, because she, she doesn't. Uh, find her place in where 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 she in, in her surroundings where she lived. She don't understand this world that seems so absurd to her. But at the same time, it has like in many of the print, she's wearing the uniform. She's wearing the red uniform that equalizes her with all the other uh, people because in Cuba, all, everybody goes to the same school, we use the same uniform. Even now, my niece and my 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 nephew that live in Cuba is like third generation. They are still using the same uniform. Um, um, it's a way to to also talk about have, give a voice to everybody. I want to also ask you about the characters, and I love how you retain the era in which those characters were originally created. Mm -hmm. you know, Sam. Yeah. Um, how do you mean this is not having Czech in your anime? Mm -hmm. Or other, other ball that, um, uh, Czech. people or, mm -hmm. or characters of Cuban history? Uh, well, because I, I took the ones that in some way uh, tell my the story more specifically, you know, this, uh, like long period, no, not a specific uh, people, more like uh, marking people that mark the period in Cuban history, uh, symbolizing the Spanish or symbolizing like the Republic for, for, for the food, the revolution is Castro, Ligorio, um, so it's, it's, it's very uh, uh, coming from the general to, to the point of the character that, that 
uh, get all the idea. What were some of your early references, not references, but influences within animation, you know, mm -hmm. has a long history in the US and Latin America, but what, what were some of the initial influences for you to take on, you know, from a print into a uh, mm -hmm. movie image? Yeah, well, I think my prints are very narrative too. I think it was the, uh, the path from print to animation was not, not hard because I have all this storytelling before in my mind. And I think I have been a lot, influenced a lot by Cuban animation, the tradition of Cuban animation, but also European, Russian animation, uh, uh, a, a kind of narrative, and all the, also, um, uh, old films like Dr. Felix and all these kind of all American animation before Disney, no? Mm -hmm. That is always uh, where the kind of cartoon that we saw when we were kids no? in Cuba. Mm -hmm. Would you share a little bit? You work with a single animator who also did the music. Yeah. Can you talk about your collaboration with yeah. Joel? Uh, with Joel Alegre, uh, I started to work with him in 2008. Um, he also worked with other artists. We worked with the, Los Carpinteros and, and with uh, uh, Fernando Rodriguez. And uh, it's amazing. It was uh, uh, very uh, creative, but at the same time, he, he, he quickly understands what we are doing and uh, very, very good technician. Um, uh, now he's living in, in Costa Rica, uh, and still we are collaborating in some, some things. But fundamentally, he, he, he is the one who made the animation in computer, because I, I, I wore all the, the, the storyboard and the images, and he is the one who I made in the computer. And that's super important. I, and it's a, a, a work that takes long time and, and, and it's a, a really hard, hard work. And I appreciate uh, to, be, to have been working with it for so long. And you're continuing to make yeah. new films. We can, we can, yeah, we yeah. Mm -hmm. we do have some, some new mm -hmm. films to show you and how she also incorporates them into the So there you have oh, different paintings that I did uh, on these years, also from 2013, 2019. You have the character, you have the, the bills, and it's, it's uh, my own in which they place the, the animation. The one going is the big seawall that goes yeah. around the sun. Yeah. And so, uh, this is a, a, a picture um, all of us when we visit uh, Arizona in 1998, and um, I think we were talking about that so in, the, in the gallery, how important was this visit for all the artists and um, for Cuban art in general, uh, how, we, how much we have said, uh, Marion Sadling and all the people in the Arizona State University Museum that made that possible. And, and and how, uh, how this uh, uh, opened the door for, for artists of Cuba in relation to the United States and to museums and galleries and collectors in the United States. Um, and was a special, very special time of, for all of, of us also as friends to have this time together in, in, in Arizona. I remember we visited the Sedona Desert the keys and, and Jamilis Grido it was an amazing experience. Um, and then I back again in 2016 uh, to my solo show in, in the uh, in, in the ASU, um, thanks to the Kaiser Foundation, Johanna and Heather and, and, and Julio that organized this show and always have been very important for me and I think for all human artists this relation to with Arizona. If I if I can add I actually went to to Havana right before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And um, there's two things about ACU Art Museum. Um, 
very well known for the Cuban contemporary collection in ceramics. I can be in Sweden, I can be in La Habana, and people are like, oh, you're ASU, and they'll, they'll throw out names and projects and, you know, I'm outside, but it's really interesting because from the outside ASU, you can see them. It's very known for that section of their collection. And so uh, it was really amazing. Um, there is a piece by Los Carpinteros in the exhibition. And when I went to La Habana, they actually built it. So it's actually the piece, the, the cathedral, the, the, the um, drill bit basically is, is about uh, the size of the ceiling in the bottom of the top. Mm -hmm. So they actually realized uh, that drawing Yeah, the work on the images in the gallery yeah. was turned into a, a physical structure. I mean, I too, as a, as a young curator working in contemporary human art in the 90s, I remember making a pilgrimage here to meet Maryland and to understand what was happening here. I mean, it was really very ahead of its time in terms of. When we were talking to Marilyn, you know, once she stipulated when she was doing trips to Cuba and she knew she wanted to do a show, she would tell the people who were coming on the trips, like, you have to buy something, you have to come with cash, and you have to bring it back yourself. But should we go to the uh, slide that follows just to talk about yeah. the piece that mm -hmm. is on view? Mm -hmm. uh, this is, this is a piece that is in the collection and also and, and is part of the series <coughs> that I did for the Havana Biennial in 1994 uh, and was titled Migration and was uh, ten, 10 suitcases painting inside with the stories of Cuba and that left the country by the sea, by airplane, different stories. Um, for me that was a very important piece and so I proposed my, my my, my career and my work, because we show later in the Ludwig Foundation in Ireland and in Whitechapel Gallery also in, in London. And the piece uh, is it, it's very personal and collective at the same time as I think all my work. And uh, they're like, like little pieces of Cuban life in each of the suitcases. And the one that is in the in the in the collection of us is very special because it's uh, it's, a, it's a real story about uh, a, 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 two, a couple that uh, uh, was swimming between the mines that separate uh, Guantanamo Bay from the uh, the, the American uh, yeah, side and, and the Cuban side. So they they refugee in the in the Cuban side in the American side. And these are two more from the same series. And this one is also very special because it was made in, it's, it's a wooden suitcase, suitcase as the one that the Cuban students, uh, that mandatory go to work on the farmers, they took this kind of wood suitcase to keep the, their things inside. So it's like the farmer dreaming a future or dreaming a, And these are also some pieces that, refer, that, that you can see the reference to these pieces in the videos, in the animations. Uh, it's a series that I did of uh, eight aquariums, but also the idea of emigration, and like this underwater world that was created, uh, imaginary for me, after the rafter crisis with all the people that died, that we never know the, the real number of how many people have died crossing the Florida stretch. Um, this is a, a piece also that the, also deal with the idea of expectation, imagination, and hopes that the immigrants have when they, they decide to. And it's a video uh, installation that shows like, the clouds and like, the mirage of the that people expect to find all these material objects that they want to do. Yeah, the this was like a, a light box installation and the video was in the center of the room. 
this also is a video installation piece, uh, uh, electro cotidianogram. What I did in this piece was like to try to make a cardiogram of the conflicts in, in, the, in Cuba. Like, uh, imagine Cuba as a sick heart, and what are the main problems that the Cuban population have. So it's, uh, it's composed by nine, nine different videos. Each, each one is like um, from two to three minutes. Um, they, they take these subjects, uh, for instance, the one that you are going to see is about the, the helpless of all the all these people in Cuban streets. Again, have like this contradiction between the slogans of the revolution and the reality of everyday life. So the idea of the installation was like you go to like like uh, to a, a hospital and you lie on the bed and then the video start different subjects. Uh, I also did this installation, The Dream of the Reason, is based on the idea of humanism and, and kind of using the, the OYA print for that. So it's, uh, it's a series in which I was working uh, with, with the big uh, inequalities we find in, in the world, in, in Cuba specifically, but in the world in general, or between poverty and wealthy. And so it was, uh, I used the, 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 the things that were used in Cuban uh, uh, markets to sell food that they are almost always empty, and they are like very rusty, uh, big, big uh, uh, iron class things, very old, and I took pictures in markets all over the world, like in groceries, and made, made these light boxes with all the food that uh, we don't have access in Cuba. And so it was like this uh, uh, eight uh, boxes, and the dream of, of Goya, the dream of the reason, uh, was projected on, on the walls. I bought in 1999, and then I, I incorporate video in many of my pieces. This is the Road to Uncertainty from 2004, and it, it was a, a piece that I did for Madras Factory. It's the shape of the Big Dipper, and there are, uh, each of the star is a video uh, that came through a kind of kaleidoscope uh, that people see from the, from the floor. And it's all about uh, uncertainty in the future, uncertainty in life, like uh, they are related also to nature, to... But it's very, very... Not so much refer in reference to Cuba, it's more like philosophical and reference to the world in general and, and all the, the questions that we have about where we are going as, as human race. No? And it's a kind of very elemental uh, animation that that I edited myself. I don't need to work with it. <laughs> for, 
for this kind of animation. And then when I moved to, to the United States, uh, I, when I, I saw all what was happening in 2016 with Hillary and Trump and all the politics, Problems here. Uh, I start to work also with the idea of a Powerball series, based on, on. It's very ironic, also and, and, and uh, humoristic as all of my work uh, in relation to the to the Powerball lottery uh, as a symbol that I use for talk to talk about politics. Um, so I I create this uh, table. It is kind of a ping, ping, ping pong match between Trump and Hillary and the Democratic Party and the, 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 the Republicans. Mm -hmm. It's also a uh, uh, little installation. Mm -hmm. um, this piece also can kind of a bingo, a political bingo. Timeline from Pito, and so it's a, a series of painting and video animations. Uh, well, with all 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 the scenes that happens every day, uh, the news and all the things related with the behavior of Donald Trump um, during this time. Uh, I call this is uh, I, I did a show with many of the pieces that was titled the Yahoo because I see in some way I think so many behaviors that are similar to what happened in Cuba during Castro regime also because it was also a totalitarian and, and, and uh, don't, don't, don't allow no one to discuss this idea of uh, one to impose a kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. um, so these are some of the pieces, the pieces, the shooting, the background, all the issues. That and your, your avatar continues to appear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. continue to appear. And then, uh, Trompito, also important, <laughs> was based as I, I use the same methodology. I use a character that was created by, by, by an artist before me. I use the Thomas Nast character, Ostui, that was created at the end of, of, of the 19th century uh, to criticize a, a very corrupt uh, mayor in New York. Um, and with this uh, reference, I created the character of some people. <laughs>
Yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah I, I, I have my like maybe like eight or ten from people, different stories, and then a story of food. Uh, it's not here. No. Yeah, uh, uh, and then <laughs> yeah, and then uh, recently I have been uh, continuing to work with with video animation. This is a, a, a installation that I did for Art Yard in New Jersey, uh, and the title is the the the, the Hand of History, and um, it's uh, all in relation to how history is tell Western history as a linear. Uh, uh, structure that doesn't incorporate other other uh, cultures and histories. So uh, also in reference to my mem memories of the school uh, in Cuba, its old furniture, and uh, the idea to work with the communities also because I invite uh, kids. I invite kids to work uh, in the walls. They they draw in the walls with white white uh, chalk. They are real, the heroes of their locality, the people that are important for them. Uh, their teacher, their fire fire department people, their, the people they admire, their grandmother, whatever. So it's a time to 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 deal with. Personal history and and then this is these are other series of pieces that I developed recently. It's based on the Sumerian the Sumerian tablets and the, the cuneiform language in relation to to social media and contemporary language. Um, so it's very ironic also, I, I take a lot of, of text from, from everyday uh, uh, social media uh, uh, context and, and just uh, engrave it again on, on clay as the old Sumerians used to do. So it's the tablets, the, the, the computers, and, and the phones, cell phones. Uh, uh, but I also use it in reference to all the protests and what was happening in Cuba and how. how so I, I, I try to see the both sides of social media, the bad side, um, with all this divide between the division and language that is offensive many times, but at the same time, the side that had people to communicate, like in the case of Cuba. Protest that was the only way we would know what was happening there. Um, this is also a video uh, that goes with this installation. Yeah, because the installation is like an Apple store now with all these computers and in the, in the wall there they go some uh, uh, TVs, the uh, monitor with the real uh, confrontation with the people. In this case it's Donald Trump and Ocasio Cortez.
Miami. Yeah, Miami. well, like, in, 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 in Miami, in, in, I, have, I had a big problem in, in like two years ago, two years ago, with a mayor from Cora Gable that accused me of being a communist. So it's kind of weird because uh, I say in Cuba they accuse you to be to critic and to uh, like we call in Cuba they call us gusanos here <laughs> communists. <laughs> yeah, it was because he didn't like the Trumpito series. It was a Republican, very very. So it was like a little, little insult by the series. But I, I, I think that that's the role of, of the artist. Uh, in my case, no, I don't mean that all artists should be, but in my case, because of my life experience, um, because of the scene that I care about, um, I, I assume this art at risk, no? and, and, and I'm happy that my work in some way uh, moved the people to have big patient passion somehow <laughs> in, in, in favor or, or against. Uh, uh, this is like the last one of the last installations that I opened in, in, in the Low Art Museum last Saturday, and the title is Entropy of Copios, and it comes from the same idea that you see before in the, in, in the series of, of, of uh, that, I, that I showed that the. the, the yeah, the, 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 the ceiling, and it's uh, also using like the the media, uh, films, uh, movies, uh, uh, not news, but new news, uh, cast, and social media. I create these videos that, are, uh, that they last like 15 minutes, minutes each. Um, they are distorted by the kind of COVID. The title is Entropy of Cobios, and for me, entropy uh, it has to do with all all the, the we are living now that we don't know exactly where is the truth, uh, how to deal with information, uh, what are the expectations for the future. Again, we we have all these uncertainties related to our life as individuals, as human in general, and in our planet. We don't know also how we, how to deal with all the conflicts of, 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 of the in relation to nature, no? And so this is kind of the very immersive and Congratulations on your show opening here at Beyond View here in Miami between now and October. Um, it's at the Little Art Museum. And I think well, we have to open it up to questions, but just want to thank you for sharing, for being here with us. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Self-portrait, you know, in the car, yeah. There's a question up here. I hope you all know. Um, 
I just had a question about this last piece. Um, is, so is that mirrored on the inside of that too? Yeah. Like, what is the, uh, the little more information about this last piece? It's really, really beautiful. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a mirror. Um, uh, the, the image becomes like very psychedelic and informal. You need to make an effort to know what are you looking at. And I related this a lot with exactly what is happening now. That, uh, we need to be like uh, attentos, uh, attentive to to all the news, to 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 take the, the what is really important from from that because we are like, bombarding for so, so so many things. So it's it's the moment that we have like the most information and we can learn every day something new, but at the same time we, we become like lost in, in so other things that also are not so important at all. No, it's like yeah, a lot. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is that when you go to the piece and you immerse, you, 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 you look through this information, but no, no things in some, some sense. And this specific piece is made only with news from 20, uh, year 2020, 2021, and 2022. It also has a mechanism that the actual lenses mm -hmm. give you that kaleidoscope effect. It's not like a video mm -hmm. that you place the full term. No, no. Mm -hmm. No, 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 it's not rotating. But uh, the, the, mirror, the glass. The, the glass deformates the image, but the image is. Oh, is I, I, I made the image through a material kaleidoscope. Mm -hmm. That's not there. This is mostly complementary. You're very direct and simple. And you approach social commentary without being propagandistic. And that's mm -hmm. really difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that I try to be direct also in my in my discourses, and that's why the narrative is also like simple. Sometimes there are a lot of references also in my work to like childhood, like uh, 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 but this witty that is like innocent but not, you know? and also tragic comic, no? It's comic but it's tragic because I mean, nothing. <laughs> You know, you yeah, exactly. You set up the framework, mm -hmm. you set up the storyline, but they don't conclude in a way that we're used to seeing something mm -hmm. in film or in a sitcom mm -hmm. that after 30 minutes everything is resolved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then this is great because the comment that you did to gallery mm -hmm. about the highs and lows in the relationship to mm -hmm. Cuba and uh, the, the lows with the special period, the mm -hmm. highs. And I think I think that's also why uncertainty is a concept so important in my work also in general, you know, in, in, in my work in relation to Cuba, in relation to Vietnam. Even with all that conflict, what I love about your work is that there's always joy mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. Like Olga and I were laughing at certain points and yeah. like, well, the video and so yeah. even with all that Do you think that that was a tactic to just to, um, as we were talking earlier, it, like it's especially hard to know from the outside of understanding those periods where like, artists experience censorship or not, it's always unpredictable and uncertain, and it depends mm -hmm. power, it depends how much you're pushing the system, mm -hmm. and how you use wit to, to do that, but that um, you always bring it back to kind of a personal reflection, but right? you shared that, that you feel like has allowed you to be able to be inside of you, but outside to offer this critique, but then ask, ask these pertinent questions. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it comes also, I think it's something genetic, because I think all the humans, we have like this relation with, with every day, because we don't know. So we have like this uncertainty, but at the same time, humor. We laugh of everything that happened. Nos reímos de la desgracia, no? It's like, 
it's, a, it's the way to deal with the sins and, and and in general we are happy people even when, when you, you can be in, in, a, in a, frustrate, a moment of frustration in general people enjoy life in some way Yeah, which is actually that's a nice kind of yeah. uh, as this book has seen, though, um, which is actually taken from mm -hmm. uh, the the boss, the big head of Jose Martí, that's at the entrance of the museum, mm -hmm. and then here's the, the Elsa show, which is the bust of Jose Martí, mm -hmm. painted over 400 times so that its features have become obliterated and sort of frozen mm -hmm. in time. But mm -hmm. what is is what has been generation after generation, now over 60 years since the revolution. Mm -hmm. But as you take it back in time to the whole period of Cuban Republic. Mm -hmm. to the so, okay. colonization of the island. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of a resilient that doesn't have an end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering if there was a way to see the other Trumpito videos that you referenced, the series? There are some of them in, in my web page. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. You can check the website sandranamosart.com and there is a, a session that is videos for you there you, you can check it. So I know artists in general always have to find money. We either sell it, or we get grants, or we teach, or we, you know, there's always that issue. But there's almost like the way you talk, artists, with all the poverty and all the strife in Cuba, you almost make it sound like artists are free. We can do whatever we want. Well, you still have to eat. So, I mean, it, I don't know if that's just something really positive about you, but you've made it like almost ideal to be an artist in Cuba. <laughs> no, we need to put it on more to Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it is it's not ideal at, at all. The problem is that, that if you are an artist in Cuba and you sell, you, you deal with a gallery outside of Cuba and you get some dollars, then your dollars give you more than normally will give you anywhere else. Uh, but uh, it doesn't mean that artists or artists in Cuba could sell their work. I think it's, it's like in every in every place. Uh, every many artists are struggling a lot in Cuba. Everywhere. Yes. Yeah, the, the amount of censorship that's going on. Yeah. So, I mean, I think whether the throughout the period of the revolution, there was never like clear policy that the control artistic production. You know, it was always grounded in Fidel's statement that you know, as long as it operated within the revolution, it was the artistic expression was free, and that was always left to interpretation. But in 2018, there was a, a law passed that actually controls artistic um, expression and the freedom to express and organize, and that's, that has really created um, a very conflictive situation with artists now where artists are being imprisoned and protesting. Yeah, it's a very difficult time for artists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, uh, I was thinking what 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 you can notice that doesn't happen in Cuba is that artists become commercial, because even when it's hard, you you don't have a, 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 to become commercial to solve your problem because you you were not solve your problem even being commercial because there's no one there to sell your work. So you in some way you can be more free to do this kind of work or work related to politics or work related to 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 society. Because uh, it, it it doesn't means that you need you, you need to find something beautiful. You're going to decide. No, it's not. It's not. 
not the way. In Cuba, there is not an, uh, an art market, not even for decorative, decorative things. So artists have this kind of compromise with reality because of, of our education also. It was important for us to, to talk about the society. And because there is not a market for, for commercial art. So anyway, if you're going to be poor, it's better to be poor making something that has a meaning, that is meaningful for the society. And all that that, uh, that happened uh, in relation to censorship and in relation to, to, to how we have like, this different way in which artists have been more affected by the scale or not, uh, in some way mark also how different uh, a generation behave in relation to, to, to art. And the, the last generation, the youngers, the, like, uh, have suffered a lot recently, a lot of oppression. I just had a quick question with the content of your work. Are you free to come and go to Cuba? I, I am living in Miami. No. But are you 2030, able? yes. Right. I, but are you I, able to go? I go to Cuba. Yeah, my, my family still live there. I go like, twice a year to visit them. Great. Well, if there are no more questions, I think we will leave it there. And thank you so much. Fantastic. Well, thank you for joining us. Come back, see the shows.